Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mitchell here on my YouTube channel. It's great to see you guys again. Happy Tuesday and happy Thanksgiving week to all of all of you and your family. Hope you enjoy safely this year and really, really value the time with your family and friends. I know I'm going to spend a lot of good quality family time the rest of this week for for the Thanksgiving holiday. And then we're, we're also going out of town to a resort near where I live on Saturday through Sunday morning. So there's going to be a couple of great gatherings to have a distraction from the COVID and just to enjoy and just to enjoy the holiday and in general. So there will, and FYI, there will be no college football picks this week. This will be the only, this will be the only picks video I'll do because I'm giving it in honor of Thanksgiving and I'm just going to take more of the time to enjoy from the, enjoy away from the social media once the day actually comes on Thursday. So it'll be NFL picks only this week. So just as a heads up, so. Well, we are in week 12 already. I cannot believe how fast it's flying, folks. It's gonna. There's three good thanks, good Thursday games on Thanksgiving Day. And the first game will be Houston at Detroit. I know Randall Cobb is out for Houston, but they have a couple of great couple of playmakers that are starting to, starting to rise up to their potential. And I think they're going to have enough. And they're, the, they're, they're favored by two and a half. Then going to take the favored Houston Texans in this one. So then the next one, we have the Washington football team at Dallas. Dallas is favored by two and a half, so I'm going to take them because I think they're going to continue to have momentum even after even after pulling out a big, big, big miraculous upset to Red Hot Minnesota, who's won the last four games in a row, and they lost to Dallas, and that's a big win for Dallas to stay alive in the NFC East, but... Can't count out can't count out Washington because it's gonna because they really they really could be they really could be tough with their defense and just in general with it being a big rivalry game in that in that division. So it's gonna be really gonna be really, really interesting that one. So yep. At night we're gonna have one of the biggest NFL games of the year and then one of the biggest most one of the biggest, most modern rivalries in, in today's NFL. The Ravens and the Steelers, the undefeated Steelers are going to be hosting them. I think Lamar Jackson and company, I think they're going to by far have enough. And I think Roethlisberger and James Conner are still playing decent enough. But I think, I think Baltimore's truly due after, after losing to New England to finally pull one out. And they really struggled that night on Monday night, Sunday night football and I think Pittsburgh's like do like I said, do to lose sometime, and they've kind of had an easier schedule, even though no schedule's easier in the NFL. I think tr Pittsburgh's truly had an easy schedule. This is definitely their biggest test. This will be the first first matchup of the year between the two teams. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Ravens for to be the underdog this game. So now now we're at Sunday's NFL Week 12 games. The Chargers at Bills. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the red hot Bills and. And I think the Chargers are going to keep at it because rookie sensation Justin Herbert is, perform is continuing his high performance. I picked him up for my fantasy team, and he he scored 27.76 points, and that finally led me to a fantasy football win. So he's really he's really pouring it on NFL, and he's really shining compared to Tyrod Taylor, and they they really gave him a good shot, and he's going to have a lot of potential in the league where depending on where he's. Where he's at in the future, that's a very good rising start that he's starting out so well for them. Next, we have Tennessee at Indianapolis. Indianapolis came back amazingly from the green against the Green Bay Packers, 28 to 14. I was not happy as a fan that the Packers couldn't pull it out, but Indianapolis, I give a lot of credit to for coming back. And they have Jonathan Taylor, they have the other starter that start that's starting to really pour it on in the league. And be one of the feet be one of the faces of them and I think I think Rivers is starting to look better he's hasn't looked this good in his career for a very long time and the defense obviously gave Roger the struggle and he had an, air, had an interception in the sec in the early in the second half and that's kind of where it fell apart for Green Bay after that so for Tennessee they have Derrick Henry they have a very they have a very tough squat and they and they bear and they barely beat Baltimore last week in a rematch of last year divisional upset but think Indianapolis with them being at home and with them having lots of moments in the last two games. And then they ups, upset Tennessee at Nashville the week before the, Pack, the Packers victory. I'm going to take them to get their big third win in a row against Tennessee. So they're gonna, I'm going to have them sweep the season series between the two teams this year. 
And then we have Carolina at Minnesota. Minnesota, as I mentioned earlier, lost to lost to Dallas in a big, big upset on Sunday afternoon. And I think they're gonna I think they're gonna have enough to beat Carolina. They're truly the better team with Delvin Cook and their and the defense is starting to play really well as ever. I think they're gonna have enough to beat beat the Panthers this year in this game. Excuse me. Next we have Cleveland at Jacksonville. Gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Browns, but sometime Sometimes Jacksonville has to win one game, I guess, in the season. I think I think they could legitimately do it against the the Browns. They're not. I don't think they're gonna win, but I think that's gonna be their closest matchup of the closest matchup of the year. Besides when they were close with the Packers. Besides that, I think it's gonna. I think they're really gonna try to keep it close because the game is in Jacksonville, and the Browns are kind of lo- due to lose sometime, even though they're playing really well so far. Next, we had the New York Football Giants against the Cincinnati Bengals, who which who are without Joe Burrow. He he got injured. He tore his ACL. It's out for the year. Lots of prayers to him for a speedy recovery. I very much enjoyed watching him throughout the season, but he is going to be out for the season, and I feel really bad and very sorry for Cincinnati fans to have yet another season like this when they think it's going to be more consistent. It kind of ended like this. I think New York's going to truly have enough to beat them even without Saquon Barkley and with Joe with Joe Burrow being out I think that's where the spread went from like probably usually two and a half to three to five and a half instead so I truly think the Giants are going to pull it out and they're going to pull out the spread with the Bengals being banged up without Joe Burrow for the year next we have the Cardinals at Patriots going to continue to have the I'm going to, I'm going to take the Cardinals to continue their streak and they had that DeAndre Hopkins play. If you want to go back from my last NFL picks, I explained exactly what happened and how miraculous that victory was for Arizona. And I think they're gonna I think they're gonna have enough to pull out the Patriots, the very much struggling Patriots. And the Patriots did they did beat Baltimore a few weeks ago, but I think truly Arizona has enough momentum over the Patriots right now for how they've been. That should be a very interesting one for sure. Next, we have the Jets, 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 the winless Jets again. That who are hosting Miami. I think I think the Jets are gonna. I I don't think the Jets are gonna keep it really close. And they're and Tua and Tua was Tua was Tua performed pretty bad this week. So I this last week. So I think he's gonna be really. I think he's gonna be really due for a good a good week this week. And I think they're gonna. I think Miami is gonna. I think Miami is gonna really pull this one out and. It's just going to, I think it's just going to be it, just barely enough for them to do it. And Joel Flacco played for the Jets, has played for the Jets a few times, but he's fell short on getting quality first wins of the seasons done. So we'll take them there. Next we have the Raiders at Atlanta and the Fel- and the Falcons. They're, they're, they're not, they're pretty inconsistent this year as most of you guys know. And Julio Jones is questionable with a hamstring injury. That's going to be a, Big question whether Atlanta will stay in in this game or not, but I think I think Las Vegas is gonna pull it out and they're three point favorites and I think they are. I think they're gonna win by five or a touchdown because they truly have been consistent. They really could have pulled it out on Sunday night. I did not watch the game, but from checking the score on my phone, it truly it truly really was close when they played Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs and they hosted them. Unlike the first time where they beat them, they it was honestly very impressive that they hung with Kansas City for how good they are. So we're gonna we're gonna take the Raiders to get this one done then. Next we have New Orleans at Denver. I think Denver is very, very tough at home, but the Saints with Taysom Hill, he had an unbelievable game against the Atlanta Falcons last week. He had 233 yards with 51 yards on on the ground and two rushing scores, which is unreal. It was 24 to 9 victory, and the Saints have been good as good as they've been all they haven't been as good as this all season I think they're truly I think they're truly going to get this one done and they're now number one seed in NFC after the Packers fell to the Indianapolis Colts Sunday so even after the Packers lost to the Saints they're starting to really build momentum at the end of the season the great for that number one seed to be still be in contention there Next, we had the 49ers at Rams. The Rams had a really, really big upset win against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last night. I watched the last three minutes. Very, very happy about that because if the Packers and Buccaneers tied for top two in the NFC, I think it's gonna it would be a tiebreaker where Tampa Bay would go ahead of the Packers because Tampa Bay won the head-to-head matchup between both the teams when they played each other. The Packers very much struggled that day too, but 
I think it's huge with them with them losing because now they're at the identical record and they're both at two or two and three instead they're both at two and three in the NFC side instead of one and two. So that's big that's big big for home field that that the Buccaneers lost and the Rams. I think they're really I think it's unbelievable. I think it's unbelievable what Jared Goff's been doing. He's been performing as good as I ever seen. I think and Cooper Cup had an unbelievable game last night and. Their offense was very explosive, and they very, they very much performed very well, and they per, and they they were very they very much proved Tampa Bay and the whole NFL round that they got it done. And the 49ers continue to be banged up. Besides, Richard Sherman is coming is expected to be back for Week 12 this week. So I think I think it's gonna I think Goff I think Goff beating the 49ers has been truly a thing. His his record against the 49ers has been very very good. So I think it's gonna. Continue and the Rams are gonna get this one done. So the 49ers are very banged up this year after being the defending NFC champs. So yeah, we will move on to a really big CBS game, 3:25. Kansas City at Ta- at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay did lose. I've mentioned I mentioned that whole entire thing on the last pit last pick. So I'll speed speed through this one more. Tampa Bay they struck they struggled, but I think they're gonna. I think eventually Mahomes and the Chiefs are gonna eventually have to. Learn what losing's like more, especially if they lose to the Buccaneers. This could true. This could truly be a very, very, very big upset after Tampa Bay losing last night. And I think they're gonna very, very much be. They're very much gonna have grit after that one, and they're gonna be around their home crowd. And they're gonna. I think they have a very, very tough defense. So I think Brady and the Buccaneers will get a very, very shocking win, and they'll beat. They'll beat the Chiefs. So the defending Super Bowl champs. Next is the Sunday night football game between the Chicago Bears and Green Bay Packers. I think the Bears are going to cover the spread because I don't think the Packers are going to be good enough, honestly, to cover the eight the eight point oh spread. Even even with even eleven and a half when they beat Jacksonville wasn't enough. The Packers have truly been struggling, folks. They the offensive line's been truly inconsistent. The defense, Mike Penton, I think eventually needs to be fired as a Green Bay fan, but. Yeah, back to the game. Think they're gonna, I think they're just struggling too much to win by more than eight. Nick Foles or Mitch Trubisky could be in the game. It doesn't. It doesn't really. We really don't know who's going to be in for Chicago yet. But the Packers will. I think the Packers will win this one. But it's going to be very, very close. Even just like the Colts game was Sunday, and I'm very, very nervous about it because it's the first time the Packers have played the Bears. So this is truly the, truly the, truly the test of the, of the oldest rivalry in the NFL and for the Packers for the 2020 season. It's truly going to be the game to see what they can do against them. And then it says the Bears, the Bears are also averaging 16 points per outing in the last 10 games against them back to 2015. I know in 2015, that was the night Brett Favre got honored to the Packers Hall of Fame, and that was truly a disastrous game for the Packers on Thanksgiving night, an embarrassment for Packer fans on national TV. So, this is also on national TV, and it's three days after Thanksgiving. That's going to make a big, big, and interesting type of matchup. Lastly, for Monday Night Football, we have a very decent one. The Philadelphia Eagles, who are tied for first place in the NFC East, will play the Seattle Seahawks. I think Seattle. I think Seattle is gonna. Seattle is in first place, but Philadelphia. Philadelphia is gonna try to try to get this one, and they're hungry to get a good win. But Seattle, I think, is gonna. I think Seattle is gonna be really too much for them. And Russell Wilson's had had an unbelievable season so far. They haven't thrown too many interceptions. He 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 hasn't. He's had 13 touchdowns and three interceptions in his last 20 games, which which is last which includes last year as well. And the Eagles' defense has very, very much been struggling, and I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna. Excuse me. I think it's. I think Seattle's gonna get this one done because I think they're truly performing well enough. Where I think Philadelphia is gonna struggle, even though they're on their home field against them. So I'm gonna take Seattle to cover this five and a half point spread. So hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next week for more pick videos and take care.